we all know that qualifying net can be a really challenging task some of us are very good in our main subject but many students struggle in the general paper on teaching and research aptitude which is the first paper in this exam before we jump into paper 1 let's talk about net a little well most of you are completely aware of this exam that's why you're here with me but as a proper ceremony everything should start from zero i would like to start with what so here is our first question what is net from the official website we get that national eligibility test or net determines the eligibility for lectureship and also awards junior research fellowship or jrf for indian nationals in order to ensure minimum standards for the entrance in the teaching profession and research remember you need to qualify net to do research now we come to the next question who who conducts this exam and who is eligible for writing this exam we will start with the first question the main body of this exam is decided by the university grants commission which was established under the act 1956 and whose main objectives are the coordination determination and maintenance of standards of university education in india and it took them 32 years to start net <laughs> funny isn't it the first net exam happened on 22nd july 1988 in brief the first jr of 1984 first net is 1988 common to both eligibility for lectureship and junior research fellowship in two parts that is in december 1989 and in march 1990 at first net was conducted by the university grants commission and then the central board of secondary education or cbse from december 2018 the national testing agency is conducting the national eligi- eligibility tests now it is being conducted in an online mode instead of offline and it is called a cbt or computer based test Now we come to another who who is eligible for writing this exam People with 55% marks for the general category and 50% marks for others in masters degree program that is the first criterion Secondly they should appear in the subject of their post graduation only So if you qualify these two criteria we go on to the next question when So the quest answer to this question is unclear due to this pandemic right now but as per the press release by the government of India the exam would be conducted twice a year in the months of June and December So let's talk about the pattern of the exam Well this test consists of two papers Both the papers will consist of objective type multiple choice questions You have to take the two papers on the same day and there will be no break between the two papers Paper 1 will have 50 multiple choice questions containing 100 marks and paper 2 will have 100 multiple choice questions consisting of 200 marks so altogether 300 marks and 150 questions 
you get 180 minutes or three hours to solve them. Mm, I guess the introduction to the exam is now done. Shall we bounce back to our paper one? Yes or no? Yes. As we began this introduction, I had said that some of us would be good in paper one, but some of us would not be. Well, paper one plays a huge role in determining your success in this exam. Most students don't pay attention to paper one and they do not try to score very high marks in this paper. They think qualifying with minimum marks is enough for them. And they completely rely on their main subject, that is paper two. It really did not make a difference in the past. But as the competition for clearing net has grown tremendously, you need to pay more attention to paper one as well. Right now, this exam is attended by so many students from different subjects that it makes it a really big challenge to qualify. Suppose you secure over 70% in paper two, but you fail to get very high marks in paper one. Then your chances of qualifying net are very less. That is the reason you should pay more attention to paper one and give equal importance to paper one. See, the syllabus of paper one is not very, very vast. It is clearly spelled out what areas you'll get questions from. So the chances of getting higher marks are actually more in paper one. Whereas paper two is quite vast. Ask yourself this question again. How far does paper one decide my success? You will find that it really matters. You have 10 units from different topics in this paper. And they will ask five questions from each unit. That's quite straightforward. It tells you how many chances you have to obtain very high marks. Let's talk about each unit one by one. In unit one, we have teaching aptitude. You need natural thinking to answer a few questions, which include things like teaching objective, its concepts, teaching characteristics, well, this unit also includes learner characteristics and their level of understanding and the factors involved in learning and teaching. In this unit, we also have methods of teaching, both teacher-centered and learner-centered. This unit not only includes ICT-based teaching, but also involves the evaluation of students' performance and new innovations in teaching and evaluation. Well, after teaching aptitude, we come across research aptitude. That is unit two. Here they ask questions on the meaning of research, types of research, methods of research, and the steps involved in doing research. Well, these are very useful topics which would help you to actually do research. This unit not only includes the ethics behind research, but also makes us aware how ICT can be applied in research. So that's it. Now, Unit 3. It is mostly based on reading skills. You'll be given a passage. And based on the passage, you will get questions. So in this unit, you should know how skimming works. You quickly read through. You scan through the content and then get the answers correctly. 
we have an extensive collection of different types of paragraphs for you to exercise. And you will have tremendous experience in comprehension of passages in our rapid fire program. Unit four is based completely on communication skills. You will be getting at least one or two questions on its meaning, its types and characteristics. If you have looked at the previous year's questions, you will see that they frequently ask about effective communication, both verbal and nonverbal, and the huge role it plays in teaching. And you will certainly see one question about the barriers in effective communication. There are so many ways to communicate in the modern era of social networking. So no wonder they have included mass media and society also in this unit. Next, in order to test your IQ level, they have included mathematical reasoning and aptitude. That is unit five. Here, they mostly ask for number and letter series and their codes and relationships. You will be also asked questions on profit and loss, fraction, ratio, time and distance, etc. This unit can consume time for preparation, but it gives you a solid advantage to score high marks because the level of the questions is actually very easy. Next, we move on to unit six. Here, you'll be asked questions on logical reasoning, which can really mess up your mind. And it's also time consuming, so you really, really need practice there. But if you prepare well for this section, then it will give you an advantage to score high. This unit has some really interesting topics as well, like the structure of an argument and its fallacies. You will get questions based on Venn diagrams, Indian logic, and the types of reasoning such as deductive and inductive. We will be thoroughly discussing this unit in our paper one course. We have not only extensive reading material on paper one, but also have a huge bank of questions which can be accessed in our rapid fire program. Unit seven is more or less about graphical representation of data. You must have seen questions in previous year papers. They give a table full of data and information and based on that, they ask questions. You will most probably get three to four questions based on the table. You will not only get to see questions on qualitative and quantitative data, but we'll also get to see at least one question on data and governance topics. Now, what is that? We will be, we will be covering that in the course. After your IQ test unit, you will have some easier topics. In Unit 8, you'll be asked questions on ICT, which is basically modern communication technology. There will be questions on internet, intranet, email, conferencing. Oh, these are really easy to solve. You might face a little difficulty on topics like digital initiatives in higher education and ICT in governance. But don't worry. It doesn't have so much content in it. It's easy to master. A couple of hours is enough for them. As I have said, we will provide enough content, guidance and questions to tackle this unit and help you secure a very high score. The last two units are based on your general awareness of people, development and environment. And most importantly, the higher education system in India. In Unit 9, you will find questions on environment, issues related to environment and human health. 
You will see questions also on natural resources, gases, natural hazards and disasters. And not only that, but you will also be asked questions related to environment plans, different government initiatives and efforts to protect the environment. Last but not the least, we have Unit 10 based on the higher education system in India. These questions are mostly related to establishment of different educational bodies and policies in India. The process of Indian education throughout history in post-independence India will be covered in this unit. So here I have given you a brief introduction to paper one. I'm sure this is going to be really, really easy if we tackle it the right way. It was really wonderful to have you guys with me. I will now take leave of you and we'll see you on the other side of the course. Bye. Okay.